Welcome everyone. My name is Andrew Squillari and tonight we're doing a virtual Daxi dinner and it's a uh, conversation all around a cryptocurrency and how you intend on generating income into the future. So um, things have happened in the past and uh, they're not quite working as good as they used to. So uh, I'm going to just share a little bit about cryptocurrency and why I think um, it's uh, worth your time investigating more about uh, what's going on in my world. So um, in order to do that, I'll do a quick screen share. So this is an intro to crypto, of course. I'm going to go through a little bit of cryptocurrency, a little bit about the markets, what's happening in the world of finance and uh helping you understand just a fraction more about cryptocurrency than you presently understand. My name's Andrew Squalari. I'm a digital asset strategist. I've been involved with crypto for over six years now, helping people understand exactly what cryptocurrencies are. I'm a Daxi customer, so I do have custody of my cryptocurrency on the Daxi platform. And I'm a Daxi coin hodler. So I, um, that means I hold my coins long-term and I do uh, like hodling my uh, Daxi coins, which is a, uh, big part of my long-term financial strategy. I'm not a financial advisor. This is uh, purely some educational information regarding cryptocurrency and markets. I don't offer financial trading or any other advice. Make sure you check your own, do your own due diligence. Uh, check your financial advisor and more importantly, talk with your accountant about structuring. I do expect you to do quite well in cryptocurrency. We don't want you donating unnecessarily to the tax office. Um, unfortunately, the way the world is, if your advisor does not have crypto or know a lot about crypto, then their advice on the cryptocurrency purchase that you have is just about a waste of your time and theirs, but they are very, very important for structuring. So make sure you get that advice and implement it. What are we going to talk a little bit about now is the world at the moment. The world has really changed. Who's noticed the change in the world right now? It, <laughs> We are a completely different planet to what we are two years ago. Um, the decisions made by governments and, and individuals and companies, you go, you shake your head. What the hell happened to our world? But have you changed with it? Has your income been affected by the current changes for the last two years? Um, has your industry changed? Do you even have an industry? Do you have a job? Do you expect to pick up where things dropped off just on two years ago. So you may need to consider some alternative strategies in your life to develop long-term income. And more importantly, the most important part of income is long-term passive income. And that is what I focus on is passive income, which means it gives you freedom of time because your money is making money. And that is getting very difficult to do that now, very difficult to make money turn into money. So what are our options? Well, of course, if you want to make money the traditional way, property has been a great thing. And we'll talk a bit about property. Of course, shares, that's another way you can make money passively. Precious metals there, they haven't really performed for a long time, but there's certainly a place you can store your wealth and they have appreciated over the long term as well. Cash management, self-managed super funds and mutual funds. Of course, you're subject to the will of the markets and the will of the trader. And of course, there's fees and charges associated with that as well. And my specialty is number five, cryptocurrency. Number five is alive and well, and it is going crazy. And I'm going to uh, share a little bit of my passion with you tonight about number five. So we'll just go through a few things about residential property, commercial and agricultural. I, I love the agricultural space myself personally, but um, you know, possible growth potential. So at the moment in Australia, we're having a huge population shift. People from Sydney and Melbourne are moving all over Australia, especially into Queensland, God's country, except we've got uh, Anna running the circus, but uh, hopefully she'll be gone next year. Um, but we have a population shift that's driving the, the property prices through the roof. They're probably going up 30, 35% this year, and they're still climbing. Uh, low interest rates, of course, you can get a house loan now for 2.1%, 1.5% fixed for one year. It's crazy interest rates. Why wouldn't you borrow money? Hang on, because the prices are so freaking experienced. It's dear, that's why you won't buy money. And of course, a low LVR, that's loan to value ratio. So making sure that you can afford it. So all those things mean you can get a hold of money. Some of the negatives about uh, residential property is really top of the trend. Like it's really at the top of the trend. You know that uh, the jobs market, the, the population shift is going to slow down. 
Uh, people are going to calm down and say, oh, well, maybe I should move back to Melbourne and Sydney, and they will. So it's um, not so um, good up here in summer for some of those Melbournians and Sydneyites. It's a bit hot in Queensland, and they might want to go back to cooler climate. So again, that's uh, another top of trend indicator. Tightening monetary policy, if the government stops printing as much money, of course, that's going to stop that flowing into the markets. Higher lending requirements, so if the, the banks and the government lift that LVR ratio, of course, it's going to be harder to get money. Lower job security, especially in Queensland, the, the tourism industry is totally decimated. We are moving into a uh, recession, which means, um, as you know, the uh, price of iron ore is at an all-time low, coal's up high, but um, Australia is a... Uh, um, a resources country so when the world slows down so do we and of course there's less jobs around too because a lot of companies and businesses have shut down so they're all risks associated with residential property commercial stuff's even worse to be honest it's got long-term stable growth that's a good positive thing when you got a commercial uh customer in your renter in your in your business they're going to be there for all, more than just a, a residential because there's a lot more capital uh needed to start a business and you get that rental income every fortnight or every month. But um, the problem is um, we are seeing a big property bubble, lease instability in the commercial and residential area where people and businesses are failing. Agriculture price to income equity inequity is just incredible. You know, what they're asking for a property and your ability to fund that uh, loan for that property is just what way out of hand now. And there's no liquidity if there's no equity. You can't get the cash yet. You can't spend it. So that's property number one. So if you like property, there's some good things and there's certainly some bad things right now considering where the property market is right now. Long-term growth potential. Do you really think that buying a property now is going to get you into a retirement income in 10, 15, 20 years time? I don't think so. Number two, shares. So this is a little bit more uh, complicated for the individual to get involved with that. So individual shares, bond and indexes. And of course, possible growth is we've got a really big mature market. So it's really hard to pick a growth share in a mature market because there's a lot of risk involved. And there's a lot of other people that are getting rates at wholesale. Short term trend is very positive because the government's printing money. And of course, leverage trading always manipulates the market a little bit as well. So there's also um, some opportunities there to do some leverage trading to make some money in shares. It's at the top of the trends, of course, we're at the all-time highs. The Dow hits all-time high again the other day. Tightening monetary policy can really strip the money out of the share market, which means it may have a bit of a correction. It's very prone to man manipulation with the ETFs. And we are in a very unstable global economy, especially considering what's happening in China and how the imp that will impact throughout the whole world. So shares, in my opinion, yeah, you have to be very, very careful. And realistic... How do you long do you think it'll take to double your portfolio investing in shares or property? One year, two year, five years, or even 10 years, or even longer. You've got to be lucky to pick up a really good share nowadays and double your money in a, in a short term or even medium term. Now, precious metals, I mean, everyone really dives back into precious metal. But the problem is with precious metals, positive is a very mature market, so it's stable. It's an uncertain trend at the moment. It can be up and down, but it's pretty flat. It's not really going too far. It is a very safe asset. They've got some jewelry consumption with um, gold um, and silver, some industry with silver. So, you know, there's a good uh, consumption of precious metals, got some industry usage. It's unstable in a global economy. It really is all over the place and it really is subject to manipulation as well. It's got really slow growth potential. It's not transactional. You can't use it anymore as money. People say, oh, if the crash comes, we can go use our silver coin to go down and buy something. Well, that's not true. You can't use your silver coin to go buy it, go to Woolies and buy food. It's not, not going to work for you. Um, low usability outside the value store of value. So it is a store of value, but that's about all it is. And of course, it's infinite. The higher the precious metal prices, the more mines produce those metals, which means it pushes the market back down again. So it's not like cryptocurrency. Cash management, of course, super and mutual funds. Some of the positives, long-term positive trend, been really good for the last sort of 35 years in Australia. You don't need any experience to dump it in the hands of someone that is experienced. And it's easy to enter the market. Your accountant or your financial planner can set it up, put your super in there and walk away from it. And hopefully there's enough money again for you to retire on. 
Now you do need a lot more money to retire on now than you did 20 years ago or 30 years ago when I first got involved with superannuation. Um, I think after 35 years of me putting money into super, I would have retired on $350,000. Well, that's not going to work today. 350 grand is not going to last that long. So you need to do something more than just rely on someone managing your super. Some of the negatives, top of trend, top of trend, tightening monetary policy also affects that as well. Prone to manipulation, of course, they're predominantly getting involved with the share market. They do say we're getting into, into cryptocurrency um, through ETFs. They're getting involved with property through shares in property companies, but it's all really just share trading. So it is prone to, to manipulation and it's an unstable global economy as in 2008, 2014, a lot of people got really affected in cash management for those two corrections. Uh, the 2008 correction was actually a lot harsher than the 14, but I know friends that lost quite a bit of money or value for their retirement um, in those corrections. And look, we're, we're lining up for another one. So who knows what's gonna happen tomorrow. What I do know, this is my specialty is cryptocurrency. So crypto has been around for 13 years now, just had its birthday the other day. Um, some of the growth positives, it's a very mature market. We've been around for 13 years now. This is not, didn't open up last year. So it's really um, been around and people have looked at it. Governments have looked at it. Industries looked at it. I have looked at it. I've helped other people understand it. So it's a very mature market now. It's still very growing, of course, because now we're having lots of large institutional investors get involved with, with cryptocurrency. They want to hedge against inflation because inflation has gone out of control all around the world. Check, check out the price of fuel and tomatoes in Australia. So inflation has hit us and it's only going to get worse. So cryptocurrency is a great hedge against inflation. Global payment providers like Visa, MasterCard, they're heavily involved with cryptocurrency. A few years ago, they were knocking it really bad, but they understood now that they have to get involved because they're losing market share by not getting involved. Square um, is also heavily involved with crypto as well. Social media adoption. So there's a lot of websites. Um, Brave Browser's got its own coin. Facebook's coming out with its own coin. Facebook and WhatsApp all in together. And... Um, and Twitter, they come, they're all involved with cryptocurrency. They're all about to launch their own native coins to use on the social media platforms, which means there's going to be a lot of adoption. A lot of people are going to be wanting to use and are able to use cryptocurrency globally through their Facebook Messenger. How good is that? Government adoption is the big one that sort of just started, started um, this year where we had uh, El Salvador said that they're going to use Bitcoin and their local currency as currencies in their country we've got uh, brazil coming out now and most of the southern countries from south american countries south of mexico have all expressed heavy desires to get involved with cryptocurrency and run it alongside their native currency the reason why they're doing that is because they can have money flow into their countries from global sources so when people go overseas to work they can send money back to their, their loved ones in those countries a lot easier and also it's a great hedge against adoption uh hedge against inflation as well because inflation is really hurting those countries a lot as well. There's a lot of legislation around now, so a lot of consumer protection, which is also good. You need to make sure that when you're putting something into something, it's actually regulated and the legislative environment does provide you some uh, evidence that the company that you're dealing with is real and that they're going to give you the return that you're looking for. Also, ooh. Sorry. So um, some of the negatives about crypto, of course, we're at the top of the trend. Everything is at its all-time high right now. Because of what's happening in South America, because of what's happening with social media for governments, for legislation, all this points to a, a high adoption rate all over the world. So unlike precious metals, there's a finite amount of cryptocurrency. So there's only 21 million Bitcoins, about 80 million Ethereum. That's getting uh, smaller and smaller. Um, every day because they're, they're burning a lot of those ones as well. Tightening monetary policy, obviously less money going to the market, maybe less money goes into crypto. It is prone to manipulation. It is just, just about $4 trillion worth of crypto in the market Australia now. So it's only quite small compared to the global investment world and it's unstable global economy. So we are subject to what's happening in the real world as well, but there's a dramatic amount of positives in the cryptocurrency world compared to the negatives. A lot of people are getting involved with crypto because the world is very unstable. The world is going into inflation, hyperinflation. There's a lot of instability 
in lots of markets and the growth is showing very positively cryptocurrency. So um, you need to get back to the person that talked to you tonight about um, this presentation to make sure that you understand more about the benefits of getting involved in cryptocurrency. And there's a lot more than what I've talked about tonight. There is some really exciting things happening in the world of cryptocurrency. I urge you to get back to the person that invited you to have a look at this presentation tonight, ask some questions, get some knowledge, get some confidence, and then make a purchase if you're planning on doing so. Thank you for being open to learning, plan for the future, but you really need to take action now. For additional information, go to daxi.com. There's lots of learning materials and support materials there. Well, and also go to the Daxi Global Facebook page and the Daxi Global YouTube channel, just so you can understand a bit more about cryptocurrency. And of course, there's nothing better than having a coach to help you set up your account, get your 2FA up and going, because that's vital with cryptocurrency, two-factor authentication, and making sure that your systems and processes for internet security is up to scratch, because we are definitely moving into a life uh, where our internet usage is at a higher risk than it was a few years ago.